Hey guys, it's Danny. Long time no see, right? Well, first of all, thank you guys for bearing with me. Everything is fine now. My boyfriend went through the surgery. We are back home. Everything was fine. And yeah, I'm not nervous anymore. I have to tell you guys, my mind and my heart was not fully into the videos because you know, I just couldn't. But now I'm perfectly fine, I'm back, and hopefully, slowly but surely, the schedule will be just like it was before. So videos should appear every day on my channel from now, and yeah. So in celebration of that, why don't we do a Q&A today? It's about time that I answered some of the questions you left in the comment section of my videos. So let's start. Nanette is asking if when a new leaf grows, it's normal to have a slightly paler center rather than the darker green edges. I would say yes within limits. So I have an example here. You can see that the center is indeed lighter in color. Overall, the new leaf is lighter than the previous leaves. That's very normal as well. And with time, when this leaf will mature, it will have the color of the previous leaves. As it grows, the very center is the newest and most fresh component of the leaf. So you can see in my example here that I do indeed have a lighter center and darker edges. It's not a very extreme uh, difference though. So if your orchid has a incredibly, incredibly yellow-like center and then pretty dark green, that might not be very normal. But a little bit of difference is absolutely normal on Phalaenopsis orchids. Many of them do this depending on variety. Some do it more than others. You will notice that with some Phalaenopsis, which have darker leaves and a little uh, freckling, let's call it like that on the leaf, the new leaves will have almost extreme freckles compared to the other leaves. That's normal too. So my guess is that it is normal, but yes, keep in mind that the center shouldn't be yellow, like this dendrobium yellow. It should be light green and fade into this beautiful, more dark green, if you will. But if you feel that the difference is absolutely extreme and doesn't look like this, it looks pretty unhealthy, then my guess would be nutrient deficiency, specifically iron. Although deficiencies with iron in orchids are pretty rare because it is a minor element, they don't consume it that much, and fertilizers usually have it. Iron deficiencies in orchids are not common. They're not impossible either, and they usually show on the new leaves, since iron is not mobile. So the orchid cannot pull iron from the older growths, like it can pull nitrogen or magnesium. But I suggest that you don't panic and if it looks anything like this, you don't really need to do anything. Just fertilize the orchid like you did until now. Sile is saying that they're using coconut husk for their orchid and the roots are becoming paper-like and they are coming off leaving a thin nerve-like thing behind. Alrighty, so the roots that you're pulling off like that are indeed dead. The paper-like material is the velamen. This outer coating that is rigid when a root is alive, the root is actually inside it. So when the root dies, you can pull off that velamen. It feels papery and the string is left behind, which is the actual root. Now, since you didn't give me many, many, many details, again, I'm gonna try to guess why the roots died. First of all, I'm not sure what you refer to when you say coconut husk. Is it the chunky medium that actually retains water or is it the fiber like coconut husk, which doesn't retain water? The point is you need to figure out why the roots died. Is it because the medium is inadequate and that can mean it retains too much water, it doesn't retain as much water and you don't water as often, or is it salty? Coconut husk, particularly the one you purchase from uh, pet shops, the cheap one, can contain salts. It might not have been prepared properly before purchase. I had it happen. Um, it happens, depend on the territory. I don't suggest you use pet shop coconut husk. If you use something that you trust and you used before, then you can eliminate this option from the equation and you're only left with watering. Do you water when the orchid needs it or when the article tell you to? Because if you're using a medium which dries in one or two days and you're watering every seven days, your roots died of dehydration. If you're watering the orchid every two days, but the medium stays wet for 10 days, your roots died from suffocation properly, excessive uh, moisture and excessive bacteria, 
and excessive acidity in the medium. So my best guess would be to make sure that you do water the orchid in time. Right now I would suggest that you repot the orchid. If you find dead roots in the pot in the medium, you need to repot the orchid, cut away all of the dead roots and repot it into fresh medium. If you don't want to play around with coconut husk anymore, maybe you don't trust it, you can go ahead and use bark or bark and sphagnum moss depending on your environment. But yeah, bottom line, you need to know why the roots died and I suspect it is a watering or water related issue. And keep in mind, orchids need to be watered when they need to, not necessarily when articles tell you to. If your orchid dries out within a day, you need to water it every day and everything should be fine. Koala is saying that her orchid finally grew two hardy roots. The other day she soaked it as per usual and then used a tiny pinch of miracle Grow fertilizer, I suspect. And the next morning one of her roots was mushy and she didn't know what happened. Well, through the process of elimination, I would say that it was the fertilizer. If you didn't change anything in your routine, that must have been it. So because causes regarding that fertilizer can be varied, I'm gonna address a few things about fertilizers. Number one, I know that all plants eat the same things. I said it before. The difference in fertilizers is the quantity or ratios of nutrients. One of them might contain a lot of a certain element and if you dose too much of that element, you can actually burn the root tips or damage your orchid. So even though you use the recommended amount specified on the label, the ratios and quantities are simply not suited for orchids. Now the more experienced you will be, the more you can bend the rules because you know what to expect, you know how to bend them, but if you're a beginner, I would strongly, strongly suggest you do not use any other type of fertilizer other than an orchid fertilizer, no matter what, no matter how much people say you can use anything, alright? Just trust me on this one. Second of all, the quantity you used. The label has a specific quantity that you can use with your orchid. Do not ever go above it. You can absolutely go below it. So if you used a pinch of that fertilizer, it might actually be a small quantity or it might actually be quite a large quantity, depending how it compares to whatever the label suggests that you use. Also, in how much water did you dilute it? It's a difference if you dilute the pinch in a one liter bottle and a four liter bottle. So advice number two, never ever dose more than what the label specifies. And third of all, never ever ever play around with fertilizer on a sick or stressed orchid that does not have many many roots. I think I did mention this before in my videos regarding rootless orchids, I don't fertilize them until I see roots starting to grow. I don't fertilize even foliarly. There's a reason why setback orchids or rootless orchids first create tiny little growths pretty much no matter what. Have you ever seen an orchid which was foliarly fertilized, growing as big as it should without any type of roots? And not on the internet, but in front of you. There's a reason for that. First of all, a dehydrated orchid does not need fertilizer. It has stored nutrients in pseudobulbs, even in leaves. All you need to do is provide water, that is the main focus and that's what you should provide, not fertilizer. Then when the roots are more extensive, of course fertilizer is needed because resources are already depleted. But we need to start off with a little fertilizer. Take whatever the label says and use maybe a quarter of it and just observe the roots or maybe use half of it depending on the water source, but don't necessarily use the complete amount. It's always better to start off with less fertilizer. And again, sick and damaged and rootless orchids don't need fertilizer, they need water. Dehydrated orchids don't need nutrients, they need water first of all nutrients can come later. So what you can do now, what I suggest that you do is actually flush the pot. Just use plain water and run it through the pot. You can go at the sink if your water is appropriate for orchids. You can use rainwater, osmosis water. Just flush that pot and try to remove the salts that the fertilizer left behind. Do not fertilize the orchid until you have a lot of roots in the pot. Just going in, maybe you have 10 roots or so, that's when you can start to fertilize and use 
is a quarter strength first. See how the orchid reacts to it. When the orchid grows a bit, you can start to up the fertilizer. But first of all, it will create a very, very, very tiny growth. It will not need a lot of fertilizer. So you don't need a lot of it. And of course, use orchid fertilizer. If the fertilizer you used was not orchid intended, maybe it had an element in a higher quantity than what orchids should receive. And maybe that's your culprit. But for now, flush the orchid very, very, very well. You can even soak it, remove the water and then soak it again. Just try to clean that medium as best as possible from the fertilizer salts. Eric has a question regarding the telumnias. Telumnia roots are actually pretty white and pretty nice when they're in good health, as you can see here. These ones are growing as well. In my experience, browning can come from staining with tannin. So if your telumnia is in bark, it might be stained. If it's in coconut husk, again, it might be stained. But if it's in moss, there's no reason for it to be stained or inorganic materials. In my case, even if it's in coconut uh, choir, it's not stained. So you need a very concentrated staining material. And the ones that I know are bark and coconut husk. Coconut husk more. So if you don't have a staining agent there, but you do have brown roots, I think they're not alive anymore. Even if they don't come off easily, it might be due to that uh, root inside the velamen. So if they're excessive and your orchid is in a contained environment, such as a pot, I would suggest you cut them. So first of all, cut one, see if it actually is dead, just to make sure. And if it is, you know, you can be confident with the others. If your orchid is in a open basket as such, it doesn't matter all that much, really. Uh, the whole acidifying the medium only happens when there is excessive moisture. If the medium doesn't stay wet enough for the roots to be affected by its acidity or by the byproducts of decomposed roots, then, you know, there's really no need to do anything about it if you don't want to. If you want to clean up the root system, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but yeah, it depends on the setup you have for it. If it were my orchid and it was in a basket like this, I don't think I would bother, at least not now. Um, the roots will decay and fall into the bucket or wherever you water this orchid. The medium you can see is very loose, it's coconut fiber. But if it were in a basket, sorry, in a pot, in a confined environment with medium, I would definitely go in and try to remove them. Ej has a question about a Calia orchid root tip. If you damage the root tip of a new root, will it be fatal? Well, depends. If it's long enough, no, it will branch out. And here's an example. This root had a little damage on the tip here. As you can see, it's starting to grow again from the very same place, kinda. But sometimes it can start growing from somewhere else. Oh, I think I have another root tip starting to form here. So it can actually branch out as long as it's long enough. If it has one centimeter or two, it might actually be long enough to branch out. If it's just the root tip just emerging from the plant, then no, it is fatal, sadly. Also, if it is inside the pot and it's damaged, you damage it and then you repot it, there is a chance it will die off. But aerial roots usually don't die off. They will branch out, I would not worry, as long as they're long enough, as I was saying. And that's how it looks like. <laughs> that's how mine looks like. Y is asking about a new fertilizer which contains sulfur. So it has the NPK and then it has additional magnesium and sulfur. So first of all, what type of fertilizer is this? I bet you it's not an orchid fertilizer. I might lose the bet, but anyway, I don't suspect it's an orchid fertilizer. If it's a fertilizer meant for a particular type of plant, there might be a reason why it's meant for that plant. And indeed, as you're saying, orchid fertilizers don't brag about having sulfur all that much. Now, sulfur, like, other elements is actually needed by plants and by orchids, but of course in low quantities when it comes to orchids. And you'll laugh, but orchid fertilizers actually do contain sulfur. It doesn't particularly say that it has this quantity of sulfur, but it does contain it in low quantities. And I cannot tell you if I ever had a sulfur deficiency because I've never experienced it. What I did experience, and I'm not alone in this, is some issues with the particular fertilizer which had a bit more than other fertilizers. It could have been the sulfur, maybe it wasn't, who knows. My personal experience, which should not necessarily be your personal uh, take on things, is that Oh, no, no, no. I'm staying away from high sulfurous fertilizers. MSU contains it. If I don't see troubles, I'm not gonna dose it. But this mentality has a little drawback. 
What if that addition of sulfur will make everything be wonderful? Who knows, that's a possibility, right? So if you want to try that fertilizer for whatever reason, try it, but on an orchid only. See the effect, see if the roots are being burned or not. And if they are, let me know because I had a suspicion with that older fertilizer and I would really like to have an answer. So if you want to try it out, try it out. And if you want to know how deficiencies uh, look, a sulfur deficiency, check the description down below. I'll link some articles. You can Google them yourself. With orchids, it is possible, of course, to have a sulfur deficiency. You have to know how much sulfur orchid needs. Your fertilizer has a very big quantity of sulfur here, and I'm not entirely sure why. But you know what? I'll research it together with you. So check the description down below. The best advice I can give you is try it out with one orchid only and see the effects of it before you move to your entire collection. And of course, being that I do have experience with the fertilizer with a higher sulfur concentrations experience, which was not good, I don't know why. Might not be the sulfur, you know, I personally can tell you, sure, go ahead and use it as the best thing ever. Because I just cannot, it would be a lie. I don't believe using sulfur fertilizers in this quantity will be beneficial. Might be wrong, I just don't believe it will. So uh, let me know, I'm curious. Uh, give me an update after you used it with an orchid. Mariam is asking if they can use alcohol instead of hydrogen peroxide. I personally wouldn't. There are two types of alcohol which are available on the market. There's the ethanol, which I believe is spread more in the Europe zone, except the UK maybe, and the isopropyl, which is more used in the USA and Canada. Now, to get my hands on isopropyl, I need to go to car shops or computer component shops because they use that type of alcohol when cleaning those components. Rubbing alcohol for us is ethanol. Ethanol, not that great with orchids. American Orchid Society actually advises against it. And to tell you the truth, it is a pretty strong thing. I would not put that thing on the roots of my orchids. I cannot tell you about isopropyl though because I never worked with it. I wouldn't try it. I still believe it's too strong, but if you wanna try it, try it on a root or a root tip, see what happens, I guess. Um, but yeah, hydrogen peroxide, I think is better suited at killing off snails. Um, I presume that's why you wanna use it or killing off fungi and stuff of the sorts. Alcohol, if you wanna use it, you might have to dilute it way too much to actually have an effect. So again, if you wanna try it out, try it on one root and see what happens. So that is it for today. It's really good to be back, you guys. And yeah, stay tuned for more videos. I will do my best to now try to post every day, even though things are not completely back to normal yet. Recuperation takes a while, but yeah, I think I'm back for good. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. And you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and don't forget to turn on notifications all of them if you want youtube to send you a notification every time i upload a video and with that said i'll see you all next time bye